Hello, hello. Hi, this is Debbie Dashinger, and welcome to Dare to Dream. This is the podcast and the video site. You can call it podcast and TV if you like. And I, I just can't tell you how much it means to me on a daily basis when these emails ding in from one of the many media sites, including YouTube, which is really doing well right now, to hear your feedback on what you're hearing and seeing on the show. You know, I've been around 11 and a half years. So, I mean, the big joke is I started in radio and I ended in podcast, at least thus far. But it's about following technology. That's been my life. And, you know, podcast really does rule right now, but we're also syndicated visually and we're also syndicated on radio. So there's a lot of places and spaces that you can see this show. I also want to announce that I am new to Patreon. So for those of you who love Patreon, Definitely look up Dare to Dream and Debbie Dashinger, and you will find me there. And whatever you want to pledge, if it's a cup of coffee or if it's a dollar a month, whatever it is, whatever, you know, what the show gives you. But just remember when you tithe what you get in return, right? It's like a hundredfold, uh, that kind of service and kindness. And so thanks for being a loyal listener and follower. It really means a lot to me. And I love hearing from you. A little bit later, I've got a special guest here, and you can see the beautiful Anna Raimondi right now. I'm super excited to have her and finally get here on the show and introduce her to those of you who have not yet met this very gifted woman. <clears throat> She's got a lot of books out, just you know, and I'll name them later. But just in a cursory way, I want you to understand she's a speaker, she's a teacher, she's an intuitive, she's an author, and she helps our souls follow our mission, which I love. I, I teach messaging. I teach visibility. So somebody who's teaching following your soul's mission is right there on the same path as I. And her particular gifts are being a medium, a psychic, and a channel. And she brings wisdom and healing in from heaven. Feels so good just to say that. She also holds a BA in clinical psychology and MBA, is a hypnotherapist, a grief counselor, and a spiritual counselor. And Anna's been featured on many TV shows, many radio shows, People Magazine. You can see a little cute YouTube clip of her People Magazine blowing somebody away and doing a reading for them. And she was also the host of the radio show called Messages from Heaven. And I just wanna do a shout out to the people who sponsor this show, and I love you so much for believing in the show and for aligning with the show to get the message out. <clears throat> Excuse me, Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. Thank you for lo these many years. You've been a part of the show. I would highly recommend if you want to do some energy healing or learn about some really fantastic radical work that's being done globally, accessconsciousness.com. Also, drdanehere.com. You can do everything from individual sessions to learning how to be a facilitator to attending classes on a variety of awesome subjects. They really are awesome worldwide. I've done the classes myself, highly recommended. And then our friends over at Thinkific. Thank you, Thinkific. My stuff is now on Thinkific. It is a software platform. So for those of you who are small business owners, entrepreneurs, healers, speakers, authors, and you've got products and programs, it is a beautiful site, about as easy as you can get, drag and drop. And then you sell your goods, and make passive income, and the site they create for you, it's uh, par none. By the way, it can even connect with your website. So if you're ready for that passive income and you're ready for a lot of ease in that space, go to thnk.cc slash deb, thnk.cc slash deb. They have special discounts just for Dare to Dream. And who am I? I'm a media strategist, media visibility strategist out into the world. I help you to create a fierce and unique presence. So you stop being the best kept secret. I help you write your book, get your book to a guaranteed international bestseller, as well as learn how to be interviewed on radio. And for a particular guest, I help them get booked and scheduled on media. And I help you stop living in the shadows so you can instead stand out and fulfill your purpose. I told you I was aligned with Anna. <laughs> so, you know, I'm going to tell you real quickly, because I don't want to take much time with this opening, but I, 
I do want to share that as far as the opening goes, um, here's what's up for me is communication. I've reached a whole new level this past year of sharing without a filter, with a lot of kindness, but with a lot of uh, transparency with people. And it happened yet again. My best friend and I were getting together for a walk and she called me in a state this morning, blah, 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 blah. And I wasn't there. I was not, I couldn't receive it. I couldn't be there for her. And I would say we're probably there for each other 100% of the time, but this was one of those moments when, when I had something in my space and I just needed to deal and be real. <laughs> so, so I was able to say what I, what, what I needed to because I love this woman, right? I mean, I love her and support her to the moon and back. And I also love and support myself and needed to be there for me in that moment. But it was so great because we got together for, for our walk this morning. And it was a moment of awkwardness because I knew that she felt like, wow, Debbie really wasn't there for me when I needed her. So I just addressed it right off the bat. Like, can we talk about this? Because let me tell you what was happening for me. And what I really needed was a breath. And for those of you who get into these paradigms and relationships, see if you relate on any level. But I just needed another human being to say, I need to talk. Do you have a minute? That's what I needed. So I had the opportunity to say, yes, I'm totally here, or I have five minutes, or you know what, I love you, not right now, but when we walk later, you know, I'll make other arrangements. So it didn't happen. She was off and running and sharing. She'd had a travesty that morning, she, you know, that she wanted to deal with. And um, it was so beautiful how we worked it out like seconds. Like she totally got what I was saying and where I had been. I totally knew she needed someone to be there in her corner. We got to do that anyway in our walk and we hugged it out, you know, and we actually left closer than ever. That's what I love about communication, right? That's really what it's about. It's not about separation. It's not about attack. It's not about confrontation. I don't like that word at all. It really is about sharing from the depth of transparency and authenticity with great love and respect. And so something I've worked on my whole life and I feel like in such a good place with that right now. So I just want to share I had yet another opportunity this morning to work on that in real time and just get to see like the bloom is what I want to say, the flower of what that is and has become the garden of what it is and how lovely it is to be able to be that with people and have them be that with me. To me, that's real intimacy. That's a real loving relationship. So to my bestie who was able to do that with me this morning, I love you to the moon and back. And so, yes. We have the amazing Anna here today, and she's appeared on the Dr. Oz Show, the Dr. Oz Podcast. She's been a guest on many radio shows, written about many publications. She's blessed with the gift of clairvoyance and the ability to hear the voice of Mother Mary since she was a child. Anna has written the books Talking to the Dead in Suburbia, An Ordinary Woman with Extraordinary Gifts. One with the Drum, A Journey to the Soul, and Conversations with Mary, which I just read. And Anna is currently writing a series of books on what the dead want us to know. And you can find out more about her at her name. It's Anna, and the last name, name is R-A-I-M-O-N-D-I dot com. Anna, welcome to Dare to Dream. It's so great to have you. Oh, it's so great to be here with you. I would love... Sorry? I said I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled too. This has been a, a minute in the planning here. I would like, even with all that I said, and there are many gifts, but I, I'd love you to explain to people what it is that you do out in the world, how your gifts manifest, and how you work with others with this. Well, you know, the bottom line is I'm a healer. So I'm a born medium. There was never a time that I couldn't communicate with those on the other side. So when I'm with people, I help them heal with those who are on the other side who want to help them to heal and, I, and help them with their journey. You know, they come through with advice and all kinds of messages. I am the messenger. I bring it through and they have to take the responsibility to hear what is being said. So whether I'm talking to one person or to 800 people or writing books or whatever I'm doing or just living my life, it comes through me all the time so that others can, can be healed. So I love the juxtaposition of who you are because I've been researching you for a while and you're this beautiful woman and you've got this hilarious Long Island accent, right? Oh, wow. 
You do, darling. Because guess who else is from that area? Oh, and you're from Long Island, right? Totally. I've been you. Yes. I see you. <laughs> I, see you. <laughs> I do too, sister girl. Yeah, North Belmore. Oh, so close. I grew up in Valley Stream. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. Uh, very interesting. So, yeah, it's this interesting amalgam of who you came out to be. I actually love that. I think that's uh, very compelling to have all these pieces of who you be. So, just so people understand, you were raised in a really hardcore Roman Catholic family, right? Mm -hmm. And when your work began seeing, communicating, talking to the other side, what was, what was the way that you found to accept, to finally allow that into your life? When I was older, it was much more difficult than when I was younger. Because when I was younger, I didn't know the difference. Um, this is just what I did, how I did it. There was nobody out there really doing it. I mean, it was, you know, the 60s and the 70s. But when I first came out, it was, it was I felt I was going to be judged mm -hmm. very harshly. Like, people wouldn't accept me. And, you know, I never really hit a stumbling block. You know, God paved the way. You know, this is what... This was my soul path. This is my soul path. This is my mission. And so once I accepted it, the other things in my life that I was struggling with all found their place. And it became really, my life became really beautiful. Mm -hmm. and the more I do it, the more I recognize I don't need to control anything because I really can't. You know, all I need to do is kind of, you know, the saying, let go and let God. I just say, okay, if this is what you want me to do, open the door and I'll walk through it. And that's kind of what happened. You're yet another example of how our mess becomes our message. Mm -hmm. So I, I love that story and how you ended up just accepting and allowing. So the, the fear of judgment, right? Which actually mm -hmm. kept you separated from what you came here to be because you had to be visible to do that and own your gifts. And once you allowed that by letting go, that you then felt the, the magic of being on your path. And then you give this out to the world, which is to help people fulfill their soul's mission. So how do you do that? What is it that you see in somebody or know about somebody to help them get clarity on their path? What I normally see are um, past loved ones around them. So I see them, I hear them, I feel them. Feeling to me is really big, or just knowing. I just know things, okay? So whether they're people who have passed or people in their life now that I feel their energy coming through, maybe because they're sick or ill, who's Mark? Who's Mark? Uh, my nephew? Okay, are you, um, are you very connected to him? I love him very much. Okay, because yeah. I kind of feel like um, there was some health issues there in the house there was somebody who was ill um but it's okay now i'm feeling that somebody was really really ill um something on the back of the neck like something on the back of the neck um but that had to be part of the plan because this is this this is a man because is, is this so this is your brother is this your brother um because i'm feeling like it was a, it was found in a weird in a weird way somebody was doing something and they felt it in the back of his neck um, and then, you know, this journey started where he had to heal, um, but it put him in a different, it corrected him. It corrected his path because he had to go into that way. As long as he has music around him, he's fine. Um, but as long as and he was able to go into that way, into that path, he was able to accept it in a better way. Um, he's okay. But I feel like Mark um, should be writing this down. Is there another Mark in the family? No. Um, is there another M name? Mark, Morris, Michael. I'm going, I'm going through my family in my head. Um, is there somebody very connected um, to this young man um, in spirit who helps him be strong? He's a good kid. He's an amazing kid. He's also adopted. So uh, we don't know. Uh, okay. Right. He's an amazing, amazing kid. And he has a sister as well? He does. Yeah. They're good kids. Um, stay close to your brother. Thank you. I do. Damn. 
So I just want the listeners to know because I'm thrilling. Sorry. That's what I do every day. You know, um, whether if the message is for the person I'm talking to or a relative in their family or coming together with people, that's, that's, that's what I do, you know? Um, and so you take the responsibility for what I get, for what I said to you, because I don't know your brother, you know, and, and I don't know you that well. Um, so, but you can take it and look at it and say, what is, what is in there that I need to know that I need to follow? Are you writing another book, by the way? Ah, oh, God, you're really amazing. Um, it's on the, it's, some, it's here. Yes, yeah, something in 2019 is going to emerge. Okay. You've got to get it out. Um, and it has to be something different than what you've written before. Like, mm. before from total inspiration. It's there. You just need to begin. And is this something I'm writing, or is it something I'm collaborating with leaders? I'm feeling the book that you're writing, hmm. your book. I mean, you can write that book with leaders, that's okay, but it's your book that's gonna be your baby. Wow, okay, thank you. This is amazing, this is really amazing. Can I just tell people really quick, like station break here. My brother, who's three years older than me, four years ago, exactly what Anna just said, uh, his hair, his um, barber was cutting his hair and came around oh, here. And he said, what is this lump? And David said, you know, whatever. And the barber said, no, no, I don't like the look of this. And you need to get it checked out. He saved his life because David went to the doctor and found out he had stage four squamous cell carcinoma. And so not a pretty journey, chemo, radiation, um, it still didn't go away. He had to have very like scary surgery close to, you know, cords that could have frozen the face and the tongue and all sorts of stuff, but very successful. And it's true, he changed his entire life. He's a composer, music was correct, it's his whole life. And although he still writes for television and so forth, he parlayed it into doing meditations and music for people with cancer and creating a TV set which, with beautiful images and messages for doctor offices. So patients and caregivers can be very calm. Yeah, that's yeah. Cool into oh, yeah. His spirituality, into his soul. Like he gets it now where it, he didn't really think about it before. Now he totally gets it. Mm. It's so beautiful. Gosh, thank you. I'll have, I will definitely have them listen to this. So yes, that's what you do. And then for the soul mission part, like, so is it that you're getting the information from the other side or is it something like a matrix that you see in people that lets you know you're on the path, you're off the path and specifically here it is? You know what, it's all from the other side. So whether it's, and plus I tap into your soul, um, but it is um, your spirit guides. It is, um, you know, your angels, your relatives, your friends who have passed, you know, they're all tapping in, kind of helping you go. It's primarily spirit guides, your higher self, you know, and the angels that are really telling me, you know, you're on your path, you're not on your path. You're completely on your path. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, completely. Um, you know, I, really, I feel like this year you'll be speaking like on a stage more. Um, than maybe you have in the past. Like, I really feel like it's like the beginning of the spring, like March or April or something like that, where you'll really get yourself going. Um, so don't be afraid. Don't hold back. I mean, you don't really have fear, but sometimes other things get in your way. Don't let anything hold you back. Nothing. Go forward. Because you have a lot to say to the world. Okay? Um, a lot, you know, and you help people in all different ways. And so, you, you know, you build self-esteem. And you give them courage. That's important. This is really very timely. Thank you. I really received that. Ah, so, wow. This is deep and it's definitely God at work right now. Um, I am curious when I read your bio, the words, uh, the new book and series that you're working on, What the Dead Want Us to Know. So since you are in direct communicado, <laughs> what is it the dead want us to know that we are, are clueless about? You know, we are clueless about the most simple things, mm -hmm. like how to find sustainable joy, how to mm -hmm. find love. What does that really mean? You know, um, how to stick to our path. 
you know, how to, um, how to love ourselves. And so they're in a place where they see in their life, they've lived their life and they want to give us hints and move us along on how we can live our life and not make the same mistakes that they make, how not to be weak. You know, um, life is a snap, one snap and it's over, mm-hmm. you know? So they want us to find happiness and abundance while we're living and they want to give us the tools to do that. We only need to listen. When you say they want to give us the tools, what, what does that mean exactly? What kind of tools? To tap into ourselves to find our own truth. Mm-hmm. You know, you're talking about um, communicating your authentic self before. You know, um, most people don't know their authentic self. I don't even know what that means. You know, finding that place inside of you where you can say, this is me, and this is what makes me happy, and this is what I want. And how can I not only communicate it to those closest to me, but how can I communicate it to heaven? How can I let heaven in to help me? You know, whether it be through meditation or, um, you know, we're all intuitive. Everybody's intuitive. Just a lot of people carry a lot of fear about it. But, you know, listening to those on the other side, seeing the signs. I can't tell you how many people don't recognize the signs that they're getting, whether the signs are about themselves or, um, you know, it's about other people. There are no coincidences. Pay Mm -hmm. attention. You know, the the world, we're so multidimensional and the world is so multidimensional can't miss it. Yeah, I'd like to talk about the signs a little more, um, all of them. And it's interesting, you know, I always thought, I had, a lot of people talk about 11-11. Mm-hmm. And for me, in my space is like, n- nothing. Like, <laughs> the EKG is completely flatline. I didn't get it. And then I, I recently, um, I recently acquired a boyfriend. <laughs> and ever since we've been together, I see 1111. We'll be talking on the phone. And I'll look over at the clock and 1111. I'll look at something else in my phone. And, and I thought, okay, this is really interesting that it would come into my life now. And it's either proving itself it actually exists or there's a reason. But I don't really, I know 11 is a master number. I know 22 is a master number, but I don't know much about that phenomenon. Okay, so what that's I, two, two things here. Yeah. Um, so you haven't had the greatest luck with men. Okay, you've been in some really, what I'm hearing is really like not good relationships. Um, This guy's good, okay? 11 is also a blessing. It is the highest sacred number. Your relationship's being blessed. So now that doesn't mean you're going to be with him forever. I mean, maybe you will, maybe you won't. But it does mean there's a lot of learning and healing that's going to happen through this relationship. This is good. This is a good thing. Interesting. So people who see 1111, is it that whatever's happening in their life at that time, they are being blessed? Well, it depends on the situation, but there's always a blessing. Mm. Um, Sometimes it's an opening up of their hearts, um, but it always comes with a blessing. It always comes with a blessing. So they have to look at what's going on in their lives. Some people see it all the time. Yeah. Uh, Because they're just being, you know, they, they just need, they need to know the blessing. You know, to be honest with you, I very rarely see 1111, mm. but I know I'm blessed. So I wouldn't be able to do what I do if I wasn't blessed. So I don't really see it that frequently, although I live at 11. And when I moved here, I didn't know what that meant. Um, so it um, comes into play. And what are some other signs that people see and what do those mean? Um, you know, it runs the gamut. You know, it really does. You know. Um, look up to the clouds when you're talking Mm -hmm. to someone on the other side. You'll get messages in the clouds. Look down at the ground. You know, um, you, a lot of people talk about seeing, you know, hearts shaped as rocks or other things that mean something. Um, You know, electricity, we're made of energy. And so those on the other side love to play with anything electrical, lights, batteries, turning on and off radios, turning on and off television, static on television. We don't get static with flat screen television. So if you get static on your TV, that's a strange kind of thing to get. Birds. Um, You know, um, I was doing, um, I was preparing for a reading, I was meditating, and a bird flew into my office. Birds typically don't flew. I had the door open, I always have the door open. And it landed on the door jam, and I looked at it, and it was a chickadee. 
And so the woman came in for the reading and I'm doing the reading with her and I don't say anything. <laughs> ready to go. And I said, you know, it's so weird, like a little chickadee just flew in and landed right there. And she looked at me and she said, that's what my dad called me. <gasps> so, you know, um, in every which way, they're going to make their way through. They want us to know that truly love never dies. They're always around us. They, that love is so strong that they want to be with us and they want us to communicate with them. So how is it that we reincarnate but that the dead can still talk to us? You know, that's interesting because people say, well, um, I was doing a reading once and don't ask me how I knew this, but William the Conqueror was there. And, you know, and the woman I was reading for said, yes, he's my family tree, but how can he possibly be here? I mean, he had to reincarnate like a lot of times. Sometimes, what, the best way I can explain it is there's a hologram of the personality. Mm. So it's almost like um, the holograms get left back with pieces of the, the personality at that time. You know, and sometimes they haven't reincarnated or sometimes they're in between lives again. You know, um, but whatever way, you know, they have something to say. And it's always, um, you know, sometimes they're really funny, by the way. Some, they, they hold their sense of humor, they hold their personality. But you know, some, you know I've, I've read for people who were abused as children, you know, and so the abuser may be coming through to help them on their path, you know, asking them to forgive, but not forget. You know, um, forgiving's really hard when you're in a situation like that. Um, and you can't forget, you know, and maybe you shouldn't forget. But in forgiving, you let that piece of the pain go. So sometimes that comes through as well. I love that you're also a grief counselor and that you're talking about forgiveness because this is something I've thought about because I grew up with a very interesting childhood. And I've, I've often thought about if and when my mother and or father pass and I was having some kind of a reading experience and the medium were to say to me, oh, you know, your mom's here, your dad's here, and they're saying, I'm sorry. And it's kind of like, why, did, why couldn't they do that when they were alive? It almost feels a little bit like a cop out, like, cool, you're on the other side and I'm still here. And it's like, there's something, um, I don't know, that doesn't line up for me there. And while I, I love the idea of forgiveness and what the freedom it gives the individual, I just, yeah, bridge that gap for me. When we pass, we see a movie of our lives, all of us. Okay, mm -hmm. we see the good, the bad, the beautiful, and the ugly. People that are horrific um, have to stay in that place and watch it for a while. Um, some of them go into spiritual rehab where they have to really look at what they did and how they hurt the other person. Because the biggest crime against humanity is to intentionally hurt somebody. Mm. So they it with a clearer view. So in asking for forgiveness, they're not, they're not any more free than they were before you forgive them. You don't, you know, that they're not looking for it because they can't let go, like I've heard, oh, unless you forgive this person, they can't go on. Uh, and that's not true, because they're working on themselves in that space. But they want, you know, they, if they never said it before, if they never brought it through, they, they, want, they want to help you free yourself. Like, almost like, you know, forgive me, but look at the circumstances. Sometimes it's really hard to rise above and say, that person was really freaking messed up. You know, yeah, I didn't like that I was the brunt of it, um, but really messed up. And maybe I should just take a step back with a little compassion. None of this is easy. None of this is easy. But it's part of who we are as human beings, you know, finding that the compassion and the love, even for people who aren't so kind to us. Mm. It's hard. Okay. Yeah. It's huge. Huge. And as a grief counselor, how does that weave in and out of your work? How do you help people to access? Because really it's energy, right? Grief is energy that's here. And once we get it out, that's when the healing happens. So how do you assist people for that to be allowed, if you will? Well, because I'm a medium and I can work with their loved ones, it kind of speeds up. You know, it's... it's speeds up the counseling part of it, where they can um, hear what the people on the other side are saying to them, such as, get out of the house already. Like, <laughs> you know, 
what's that? So it's not me as a grief counsel saying, do you think your husband would want you to go out of the house? Would he want you to do that? It's them saying, and I want you to go to this specific party because at that party, you will heal an opening up. Or I brought this man into your life, give him a chance, you know, uh, where they're coming through with specifics about, you know, how they can do what, you know, what they need to do to move on with their lives. But again, I'm just the messenger, you know, it's up to them to, to listen to me, to really hear, well, not even me, to listen to their loved ones that's coming through me so that, you know, they can move on with their grief. You know, I do a lot of work with um, parents who've lost children, which is the hardest thing I do, by far. Um, and, it, and, you know, you never, that hole in the heart of a parent who's lost a child, healing doesn't, it doesn't happen the way it will happen with somebody else that you lose in your life. It's always there. It's dealing with that hole, dealing with the hole, um, knowing that their son and daughter is um, pushing them in direction to um, heal through um, maybe putting something forward, you know, starting a foundation and being there and getting there. But uh, these kids come in so strongly, so strongly about what they want and you know, what they want to about. And helping the person release the guilt. There's so much guilt. Mm. So much guilt. I can, yeah, I can imagine for the parent, uh, no matter what, there must be so many what ifs and if onlys. I should have, could have, would have, you know? Mm. These are not things that help us heal. Mm. Very, very interesting. Such a nice marriage of what you offer too, that you can also assist the, the healing process. And I, I wanna talk a little bit about your book, Conversations with Mary, because through you, Anna, Mary teaches important truths to the readers, us. And one of them is about this, and this is a quote, the soul, its immortal nature and the lessons along each soul's journey. I just love that line, the soul, its immortal nature and the lessons along each soul's journey. So share a little bit about that because I'd like to know more like what is the lessons, how many lessons and, and the immortal nature, I understand that part, you know, forever we, we go on ad infinitum in different incarnations, but in this particular incarnation, whatever it may be, what is that? What, what kind of things are we brought here to learn? You know, obviously every soul is unique, but the things that we are to learn are things that we didn't learn in our past lifetimes. You mm -hmm. know, the most, the most important thing for any of us to learn is how to really love without boundaries. You know, to um, sit in the um, divine nature of God, which is also the spark inside of each one of us. You know, that's what the soul longs for. Well, it's not an easy thing, you know, this is reality, this is the real world. Um, but that's what ultimately the goal is searching. And so the lessons come in, in big and little forms, but we know what we need to learn on a soul level before we incarnate. We accept it. We totally, and we, and we come through with our soul groups too. So we have contracts with, a, with other souls and what we're going to learn and how we're going to learn it. And some of the lessons are really hard. And some of the lessons are not so hard, but we walk away from. Yeah, interesting. And so then if some of the lessons are hard and we don't get them. That's right, we have to come back and do it again. So I tell everybody, you might as well learn them now. Like, do you really want to go through this again? You know, I mean, we choose to incarnate again. We choose to reincarnate. Um, that's a choice. We always have free will, we always have a choice. Um, but again, this souls want to, they want to do, we want to do this. We want to get as close to that perfect love as possible. And these lessons need to be learned because they make the soul more pure. Mm. And speaking about sitting in the divine nature, that is really nice to hear. So one of the things you talk about quite a bit in the book is prayer. And uh, this is something that Mary touches upon and that it's prayer, it's power, the right way to pray and the difference between surrendering to God and not taking responsibility for one's action. What are we missing about prayer? How we could, we we how could prayer be? No prayer. You know, you know I feel like um, we've, co we've come so far, and Mary, Mary says this at some point in the book, so far from God, that we need to communicate. 
we need to talk to God. So whether it's a prayer of your religion, doesn't matter what religion it is, as long as the religion is based in love, or it is a prayer just from your heart, or it's chanting, or it's singing, whatever it is, there needs to be a connection to this high vibration that is God. You know, um, we will feel better. It will be easier to surrender. So surrender doesn't mean you sit back and say, okay, I surrender God, I'm done. No, it doesn't quite work that way. Surrendering is a partnership with God. So in surrendering, you pretty much say, you open up the door and I'll walk through, okay? So it's a partnership with God. But you have to have the communication with God to be able to surrender to God. And that's prayer. I mean, the, the way I pray, I just talk. Like, you know, like, oh, I had a great day today. So thank you for bringing this person into my life. I don't know what I'm supposed to learn from this other person, but I'm open to it. <laughs> You know, or I'll surrender my kids to God, you know, and I say, thank you for protecting them. You know, you know, the way Mary tells us to pray is to claim the prayer. So um, thank you, God, that my son got into a great school and he's just applying to school, say, you know, it's pure faith. People are afraid to do that. They're afraid to hand it over to God. And we've moved so far away from, from God. Like we, in, we enable the hate. We enable the evil, you know, and we need to be letting loose the love. That is what connects us and makes us all one. Yeah, so the prayer piece, when we say thank you for, so is that like in, in advance as though it's already happened? Yeah, pure faith. It's saying I believe so much that I am worthy for my prayers to be answered. And it's also an intention. You know, and, you know, there's different words that we use in our society. You know, prayer and intention go hand in hand. They just do. And then the meditation part is the listening part. You know, however they want to communicate back with us. Mm. So they, they all go. They all go together. It's not hard just to have a conversation. Yeah, that's lovely. I like that. And you talk about we enable the hate, we enable the evil. That's so interesting. Um, in your book, Mary talks specifically about terrorism, about the world's refugee crisis, about racism, gender inequality, marriage inequality, and more. <clears throat> so Mary basically guides us to go back to the simple messages that God gave us of love and of peace. Right. You know, when she says it over and over again in the book, keep it simple. <clears throat> If we keep it simple, we'll break down those barriers. Don't judge, don't discriminate. You know, um, what's, what's the insecurity in you that you feel the need to do that? You know, accept people for who and what they are. Mm. And that's what makes the world go round. And that's what will bring paradise to us. And we need, we really need to start doing, it. we need to start praying. We need to start being kind because it'll raise our vibrations. The higher our vibrations, the more we can pull other people up with us. Hmm. Well, this is Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. If you would like a report on free publicity, how you can become the go-to expert and be interviewed on media right now, get your gift from me at debbiedashinger.com. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R. And if you're tuning in, this is the Dare to Dream podcast and video show. And I'm interviewing Anna Raimondi. And you could find her at AnnaRaimondi.com. Again, her last name is R-A-I-M-O-N-D-I.com. You know, Anna, I just want to say I, I'm so fascinated by what you're saying about how the other side helps. I know you're married, right? You kind of live in the burbs, the suburbs there, and you've got children and all of that. So is it so for you as well that you receive guidance from Mary as well as from those on the other side that help you navigate your mission and your life with your family and personally? Yeah, I, I do. She's always by my side. She's always, she has since I'm five. You know, she's um, always been there to get me and, um, in the right direction and I hear her. But I'm, I also get direction from my spirit guides and my angels. I cannot communicate with my past loved ones. Mm -hmm. um, they do things, like my father will come down through and do some really funky things in my house, but it's not a direct communication. 
like I don't hear him speaking to me. He'll do other things, but I don't hear him speaking to me the way I hear your relatives or somebody else's relatives speaking to me. But I'm open, I always open myself up to the guidance. I mean, that's what it's all about. And what is, so I'd like to hear some stories, if you don't mind, people that you've worked with, maybe some really extraordinary situations of people you helped who had big breakthroughs um, or emotional releases or learned something they would have never known before had it not been their connection with you? Okay, this is one of my favorite stories. Um, it was between Thanksgiving and Christmas and I pulled into the garage and there was a young man there, nice looking guy, just standing in my garage. And I knew he was in spirit and I saw him, full body. And um, didn't know why he was there, I asked him why he was there, nothing. He didn't tell me anything. Um, between the time of Thanksgiving and Christmas, I kept seeing him, kept seeing, kept saying, I don't know what you want me to do for you, how you want me to help you. I was putting away the Christmas decoration in my attic where there was no wind tunnel. It's in my bedroom. Um, my husband and one of my sons was two flights, flights below. And I went up and the door closed. Mm -hmm. so, that's weird. so I went back down again. I opened up the door and it's really cold in the attic. And I opened up the door and I got some more stuff and I went up and the door closed. So now I'm getting a little annoyed. <laughs> one more time I do it and then I bring myself downstairs and I say to my husband and my son, why did you do that? that that's not funny. And they looked at me like, what are you talking about? We, we were playing a video game. You know, we didn't do anything. So I go back upstairs and I stand by the foot of the stairs of the attic and I said, whoever you are, if you can't play my sandbox nicely with me, you've got to go. But then I see him and then he starts talking to me. And he tells me that um, he died in an accident around Thanksgiving on 95, which is um, um, the highway that runs through here. And that his girlfriend was pregnant mm. and had a child already and he had a message for her. And I'm thinking, okay, great. Like, I don't know you. I don't know your girlfriend. I don't know how this is going to happen. So at the beginning of January, I was getting my hair done and the woman who was doing my hair tells me her friend died around Thanksgiving on an accident on 95. So I said, wait a minute. So I described what he looks like. And, um, and she says, yeah. I said, does he have a girlfriend who's pregnant? She said, yes. I said, okay, do you ever see this woman? And she said, well, I'm, gonna go, I'm going to his memorial like in a week or two. I said, okay, you have to ask her if she has on a locket with his hair in it. That's a very strange thing. I have never worn my husband's hair on a locket on my neck. <laughs> no, but it wouldn't work for me. Um, and so she, she's like, okay, okay, so I'm going to do that. I said, she's going to respond. So she goes and she asks this woman and she does have the hair of this guy on the locket around her neck. And so this girl is Jewish and the guy who came through was Greek Orthodox. And his message was, I want my, I want my son baptized. You're having a boy and I want him baptized. She heard the message and she said, no way. Um, so she did not have him baptized, but um, she started to come to me and she became a healer. So, you know, now she's out there helping other people. So it changed her world. That's spectacular. Wow. Totally left field. You know, like she wasn't sitting in front of me. You know, just kind of, he was there. Okay. You know, it's really interesting hearing this story is that in a way she got baptized. That's right. You know, she got cleansed and completely changed the trajectory of her life by virtue of him coming through and you following up on that. Yeah. Hmm. And the same thing with the woman who was the one who had to go over to her and say this to her. You know, it takes a lot of courage to say something like, do you have, you know, this man's hair? <laughs> like, and lock it on your neck. <laughs> you know, but, you know, she took it and she followed it through. That's beautiful. And what about the Dr. Oz show, Anna? I know you were recently back on again. Is that right? Yeah, it's going to air on February 15th. Um, I'll probably be on in another four months. I'm kind of on and off the show. The podcast that I did with him was his most listened to podcast. Um, it's a great show and he's a great man. I mm. love him. So this next show is about um, near-death experiences. Oh. 
I know so many people who, I know so many people have been through NDEs, mm -hmm. big, who yeah. will be interested in that. Yeah, it was great. Um, so it's always fun to go on his show. And when you go on Dr. Oz, do you channel when you're there? Do you, yes. uh, yeah? Yeah. Um, if you, you watch the show, especially, so I was on two segments, especially on the second segment, um, I channeled um, for the woman that was there. I said a little bit to the first woman and I said more to the second woman. How do they do that? Is it, do they pre-qualify people? Or it's just you, you know who to pick out because you're being guided by? Um, these were two people um, that were brought on who had the NDEs, okay? Uh -huh. That it, like how it just came up like in conversation with you, that's sometimes how it comes to me, it just came up in the middle of the conversation I was having with her. Um, yeah, so they, nothing like that. The last time, I read somebody in the audience. So I don't know, you know, I don't know any of these people. I just sit with them and I can block out the whole audience. You know, somebody said to me, well, how do you know it was for her, not for, you know, somebody in the audience? Because you know, I knew it, I knew it was for her. How do I know it's for, you know, when I'm reading for 700 people, you know, that it's on the right side of the room and it's with the woman with the blonde hair, you know, how do, you, how do I know that? Because they tell me. Mm. What, a, what an amazing world you live in, I have to say. Uh, I'm fascinated by it. And so you have a couple of things coming up I just want to share with people so they can have the buffet of what's possible. I know you've got something going on in Italy. Will you tell us, which is like my favorite country, tell us what you're offering there. Okay. Um, I do a lot of women's retreats. And so this retreat is called um, La Bella Vida. I'm finding the beauty in your life and your soul, expressing your soul, finding yourself and let it come forward. A lot to do with where you're going in your life, your path, how to get there and how to open up your heart around that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's coming up. Um, I'm also going to be, I'm appearing in Greenwich. I'm appearing in the Hamptons um, mm -hmm. coming up. Um, it's all making um, my website because um, a lot of this is, beginning of the year this is when i said all these things i probably will do a retreat with mothers who've lost children mm. but um but the retreats the retreat in italy is going to be great i did a retreat last year in ireland it was amazing i like to pick very i pick countries with heart mm. you know we feel it also good food <laughs> good food and good wine <laughs> yes and, and the toady is a beautiful little walled city um, and we're staying in a place where the food is completely, I mean, it's Italian, you mm. know, good. <laughs> it's good and gooder. Yes. Absolutely. And uh, tell us about the jewelry that yeah. you have. Mary, um, when I was writing the book, said that um, people need to be able to connect with her. And as human beings, we connect, we touch, you know, um, we like symbols. And so she pretty much told me that I needed to start a jewelry line. And so um, my friend is a jewelry designer. And so the two of us, you know, we sit down and we pray and she prays as she's making the jewelry and mm. she's created some beautiful jewelry, which is also on my website. And the pearl is Mary, you know, the womb, you know, so it doesn't, you know, in the book, Mary talks a lot about being a mother and losing a child and just being a mother in general, you know, connecting to the mother, connecting to us, you know, she's everybody's mother. Mm. Completely like, no, there's no religious boundaries that will keep anyone from her. Why do you think Mother Mary, of all the, the characters, if you will, in mythically or otherwise or in history, who could have come through, is, is she a representation or is she truly the Mother Mary and why her? Why her, why you? Um, well, I asked her why me. And she said, because I would listen to her and I had a platform and that was important. Like I would speak it. I had the courage to get it out there. You know, where there's lots of other people hearing her and seeing her, but they may not have the courage to mm. really put out what she knew I would. Um, she's been chosen as a messenger of God to help us on this planet, get it right. Um, you know, her voice, she's very persistent. She's gentle, but persistent. And I think that we're ready and we need the nurturing. You know, we need to be nurtured. 
we need to know that we're not alone, you know, and she's going to help us through this. Now, you know, you don't pray to Mary. You pray with Mary. You yeah. know, God has the prayers. You pray with her. She wants to pray with us. She wants to strengthen us. God chose her. Now, other people could be hearing other characters, but this is the one that, that I hear. And when you say praying with her, what does that look like? How do you pray with Mother Mary? You ask her to pray with you. Please pray with me. Mm. You know, um, like people who say the rosary, you're praying with Mary. You know, um, you're not praying to her. She can't answer the prayers. You know, our prayers are answered by God. You know, the healing comes through. It, the big healing comes through God. I mean, there's other, you know, entities up there that can move us toward healing. But God is, God is the one of the miracles. And what about the angels? I know you said you speak to them and you see them. So how are they involved in this? I've been told if you want an angel to assist you, you have to ask. They can't just of their own volition start to do something. But what else? What else can we do to uh, interact, to greater know them and have relationship with them? You know, talking to them is a big thing and calling them in. Whoever told you that is absolutely right. Um, they are a very light energy, okay? They do not understand the human condition. So if you say, well, am I going to die? They'll say, yeah. <laughs> holistic in the answers they give you. Where a spirit guide will say, yeah, but not now. You know, um, you, you can't ask an angel a yes or no question. You have to ans ask a question um, that there has to be, you know, more of an answer to like a paragraph. Um, I always, when I've taught communication with angels, I always tell people to write out a question in their right hand, you know, dear angel, and then ask a question and then take the, and then close your eyes, you know, feel yourself connecting, meditate, ask them to come through and then take the pen in your um, less dominant hand and just start writing um, mm -hmm. because they like, then they'll come through in different ways. Some people draw you know, um, write, draw, just let them come through. Because if you're using your less dominant hand, you're not controlling it. You know, it's a bit a different part of your brain and you can just let it come through that way. Nice. So dialoguing with your angel or so even artistically communicating back and forth. Art's a big thing. Mm -hmm. You know, art, um, no, I'm not an artist, um, but it is an absolute expression of soul, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and when they come through, they sometimes will draw something as opposed to saying something, depending on who you are and how you can, how you can accept it. But that's mm -hmm. automatic. Writing. Automatic writing works with them. And okay. Them. Engage more, engage more with the angels. I like that actually a lot to, to really create that relationship and that bond. Um, so just very quickly, folks uh, who are watching and listening, a reminder about Thinkific. If you want to watch a short demo of the online course and membership platform for entrepreneurs, it is the online education platform. Entrepreneurs and creators use it to grow their business with online courses. If you like Lewis Howes, he's a big proponent of theirs. I am as well. And remember, there's Dare to Dream listener specials. Go to THNK dot cc slash deb and also if you're loving this show subscribe and then it'll come right in your inbox every time a new fresh show is released you don't even have to think about it you don't even have to thinkific about it it'll just come right into your inbox so leave a five-star review for so the people who really will benefit from this conversation can find it because you are influential and let them know Again, I'm speaking with Anna. She's a spiritual counselor, a medium. She channels the Blessed Mother Mary and her website, Anna Raimondi, R-A-I-M-O-N-D-I dot com. Anna, I would love to know uh, what one ritual or daily practice do you engage in that keeps you open, flowing, and connected? Every day I wake up. And I thank God, the universe, that I have one more day to feel love. And I open my heart. And that's what I do. And then I just walk through my day. May I add one thing? Yes. Um, I'm doing a Facebook Live tonight um, at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. If anybody wants to join, all you have to do is show up at my Facebook page. Just your name? Anna Raimondi. Great. I'm already connected, so I'll get it. <laughs> cool. 
Lovely. Uh, how often do you do those? Um, I did a short one the other day. Um, I'll be doing one tonight. I try to do them as often as possible. I'm trying to get myself into a set day, but I haven't been that organized yet. But um, hopefully I will. I do okay. them once. Great. And say again what time it is? It's at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. Okay. Good to know. So great. That's, uh, I think, uh, midnight my time. I'm sure it'll be up. No, you're behind me, aren't you? Well, what time is it there now? Yeah, um, so right now it is, good question. It is four, right? And it's seven. So eight, seven. Oh, so it's six o'clock my time. It's terrifying. This is why I'm the talent. I'm not the mathematician. <laughs> Geography, science, take it off the plate, gang. This is why we hire people. <laughs> <laughs> this is easy stuff too. Yeah, great. So anyway, Facebook Live, I, I would love to watch your Facebook Lives. I bet that's amazing what unfolds there. And since this is Dare to Dream, Anna, I'm curious with all you have created and all that they're assisting with you with to create, what are you next Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams and goals? I just want to have um, enough of a platform that people can understand what heaven is all about and they can connect their, themselves and they can heal through the energy from above. That's really what I want. So just a bigger platform to do this all so that the world can hear. Well, for those of you who are interested in seeing Anna in person, I mean, obviously Italy, <laughs> that wouldn't stink. <laughs> that would be pretty amazing. And she's gonna be here in Los Angeles coming up quite soon at the Los Angeles Conscious Life Expo. She's one of the headliners. And um, I'd love you to tell us a little bit what can people expect who come there. I just wanna do a PS, come in person because it's an amazing event. And you can also live stream it. So PS, you can actually participate from anywhere if you're not having the opportunity to fly here. So with that said, Anna, what is it that you'll be presenting or talking about? Well, I'm gonna be doing a workshop on all things heaven, um, talking about you know, some of the things we spoke today, but more in depth, you know, um, teaching meditations and how to connect to the other side. I'll be doing a reading you know, as part of that, helping people open up to their own intuitions um, and, um, and not being afraid, cutting down the fear you know, just allowing people to really open up their hearts with the help of the other side. Nice. I love every time you say heaven, if it's in your book, or if you say it, there's such a peacefulness. I don't know if it's the vibration of the word, the idea of the word, but it's so beautiful. It is. And it is not said enough. I can say that because the... No, it's not said enough. Mm. And hopefully people will get to that place where they can talk about spirituality without feeling that they're being judged. Mm. Yeah, your path comes full circle, doesn't it? Yep, it certainly does. Mm. Powerful. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I've really enjoyed this. Well, thank you. I enjoyed being on with you. It's fascinating. So for those of you who would like to check out her books, please do so. Her website, her jewelry, her upcoming trips. Uh, absolutely, or to see her in person in Los Angeles. And again, it's R-A-I-M-O-N-D-I, -I, and the first name, well, you can see it right here, A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, pretty easy, AnnaRaimundi.com, and also her Facebook page. And I'm going to end today's show with this quote from Conversations with Mary by Anna Raimundi. Here's the quote. When you feel and see the beauty of God within... You can love not only yourself, but others. This is the ultimate power on earth, to seek the union of your truth and God. They are one and the same. It is the divinity inside you. It is not about loving yourself so much that you rise above everyone else. No, it is the opposite. It is about loving yourself so much that you are humble to all the world. It is knowing that in serving, you are served. It is a place of peace. 
In the next weeks on Dare to Dream, I'm featuring Sky Cubby as well as Vicki Gay. These are amazing transformational conversations you will want to tune into and hear the exceptional transformational things that they are up to and the greatness they're creating in the world and opening up for us. You can subscribe to these YouTube videos at youtube.com slash Deb on the radio. Remember your free publicity gift at debbiedashinger.com. And again, Patreon, please go there. If you love the show and enjoy watching it, 11 and a half years you've been following, go ahead and contribute. The show will always be free for you, I promise. But if you'd like to contribute something now and then, we'd be deeply grateful. It just opens us up to do more and better for you. Thank you for joining today. And remember, the secret of success is having the courage to begin in the first place.